Dear Toastmasters and guests, welcome to the World Conference of Toastmasters District 30. I'm excited to be here with you today, but I feel even more excited to introduce you to an amazing speaker, Mr. Bill Russell. about a very, very, very important topic. When they go low, we go high. The art of attracting and retaining members. Bill Russell is a distinguished Toastmaster who has founded, host, mentored, and rejuvenated clubs in London, Cape Town and Chicago. He has seen a wide variety of ways in which the meetings are run in his 22 years as a Toastmaster, visiting clubs in six countries, including Australia, New Zealand, and Appleton, Wisconsin. Bill has been a keynote speaker, consultant, and trainer for Bluetooth companies such as the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, J.P. Morgan, General Electric, Deloitte, and Ernst and Young. He is a past president of the Professional Speakers Association of Southern Africa's Cape Town chapter, was a founder member of the Professional Speakers Association in the UK, and was awarded the distinction in 2012 as the Area Governor of the Year in Toastmasters District 74, a district covering nine sub-Saharan African countries. Please, let's all welcome the president of Lively Toasted Toastmasters, our current District 30 Club Extension Chair, Mr. Bill Russell. Thank you very much. I took this picture from my roof during the Chicago Air Show. And I love the picture, it came out great, and that was with my iPhone. I was shocked at how well it came out. But I thought, you know what, let me borrow a line from Michelle Obama. Basically, I'm like the Melania Trump of Weight Watchers. <laughs> and, and see if I can't use this, because what happens when we get to a position where our club's numbers go down so much that all of a sudden we've got to start getting new membership? Right? How many people here have been a member of club for more than three or four years? Um, how many of them have retained the membership or, or you find a lot of turnover? Or you go through ebbs and flows, don't you? All right? That's something that you find out. One year, all of a sudden, you guys are riding the waves. You've got 30 members. There's 20 people at every meeting. There's never a problem getting someone to fill a roster spot. And a year and a half later, you're begging for people to come and take a spot. Okay? Happens all the time. I've seen it happen to great clubs, I've seen really great clubs disappear, and I've watched small, small clubs that have really taken the time and the initiative of becoming great clubs. So for me, thank you for coming. I know a lot of you came simply because it was standing room only and storytelling, but you know what? Let's talk about what it takes to do this. One of the first things we're going to say is the reason I put this up is, this is a show, and you should start thinking about your meetings that way. Think of your meetings as a show, it's not so much as a meeting, but as a show. It's a performance. And you're trying to put together the best possible performance you can. I will tell you right now, they perform for about 30 minutes, but I work from home, and on Thursday and Friday, I'm going to say they each put in about three hours beforehand. All right? So there's three hours, six hours worth of, of training that went on before they put on a 20, 30 minute show before every th everybody on a Saturday and Sunday afternoon. To me, that's what it's about. It's how much work you put on beforehand and where you go with it. See, this is my thing. According to Toastmasters, according to uh, the Launching Successful Clubs book, uh, everyone here knows probably it takes 20 members in order to charter a club. There's a reason for that. It's hard to, to get any momentum if you don't have at least 20. Okay? So they won't let you even think about starting unless you have 20 to start out. But the interesting thing is, uh, they say it takes 30 to 40 members in order to really have a highly successful club. I'm not saying that that is a law, because I think all of us probably know people in here that have, are in clubs that have 10 or 13 people that are really dynamic, that have great meetings. 
that they learn a lot, that there's a lot of learning opportunities and there's a lot of opportunity to speak and to get evaluated. But the reality is that it's really hard, unless you have around 20, to get any kind of audience. So a, a club is required to have 20 members or a net growth of five in order to get distinguished club program points. Now a lot of people say, well, it's, you know what, we don't care about the points. The points are there for a reason. And it's simply because if you try to follow that program, it means that you're, you're running things rather successfully. You get points for having new members. So what does that mean? You've got a flow of new people, new blood that's coming in. You get points for getting CCs. What does that mean? You've gotten somebody through the first steps. They've, we just had a CC today, a, a number 10 speech today in our club. Right? We celebrate that. At the same time, you get points for having people CL, et cetera. So the, the more people you have going all the way through the program, the more chance you have of success. I want to show you a slide. Okay? Um, this is our district, District 30. All right? And, and if you, I can send you slides of this if you guys want it. And don't, don't worry about it, writing everything down. But basically, in our division, 30 or, or more members, only 11 clubs out of 127 that are not suspended. We have 133 clubs, six are suspended. Of the 127, only 11 have 30 or more members. So if you remember the previous slide, 30 to 40 to have a highly, all right, well, we have 11 out of 127, 9%, right? 20 to 29 members is only 23% of the clubs in this district. In fact, 45%, our biggest slice is 11 to 19, and an incredibly high 23% is 10 or less. Those clubs are bordering on closing, okay? Bordering on closing. So you have to start thinking about what you want to do with that. Now, the bottom little part here, only three clubs have grown to five or more new members as of the 31st of October. Okay, Five or more new members, only three clubs. Any of the ones 10 or less, those are the ones that really should be doing this? Zero. Any of the ones 11 to 19? Zero. Right? So basically it's telling you if you're in that situation and you're not going out, you're not trying to get new members, you are teetering on possible disaster. Um, 20 to 29, one club, and they've got exactly five. And then 30 or greater, there's two clubs. One did five, and the other one's at 14. Uh, 14 is us, like we toasted. Okay? And yes? How many of those clubs that have that large of a membership are community versus uh, corporate? It's a good question, and I'd have to break that down. And I'm going to guess it's probably more community. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, possibly. It's, it's hard to tell. I am, I, like I said, I'm the club extension chair. Sounds like something you get at Sam's Furniture. But I'm in charge of trying to get uh, new clubs helping, helping to get new clubs going along with the growth director, Stella. And we're having a meeting with Motorola Solutions just down the highway here on Tuesday. And I called him up. I said, listen, we have to have at least 25 people in order to hold one of these meetings. And uh, he says, okay, well, I'll, I'll put out the word. And I called him up this week and he said, uh, I th we've got 54. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then he called me back on Friday and said, we're at 73, I may have to get more seats. Right, so that's a fantastic situation here. I'm thinking we may have to open up two clubs, okay? Now, why do I put this out here? 14, we've raised 14, okay? We had our meeting this morning. I just got here after our meeting. We had four guests, three of them signed up today, okay? And the fourth one, Anyone wants to wager 100 bucks, she's mine within four weeks. Okay? I know she's coming back because of the way that, things, the way that we do things at the club, and I'll, I'll tell you through that. So I think the big question here is how many people try to get through your door? Okay? This is an interesting question. Now, I've actually watched this bear try to get into a car. Um, we used to have a place in Montana, and if you come out to my car, you'll see scratch marks on all four of the uh, doors. I think of it as a badge of honor. But they have amazing smelling capabilities. So if you have as much as a Tic Tac Mint in there, they're interested. And he's trying to get in. Interesting for me, how many of your websites are up to date? Yeah? How, how many of you haven't checked? Because I'll, I'll be going to be real honest with you. I ended up, so we were just in Colorado uh, for a summer vacation. And we were in Keystone in the town next to us. There was going to be a meeting on Thursday night, and I'm like, to my, go to my wife, Jerry, hey, let's go to the meeting. And I know you're thinking, isn't he exciting? <laughs> yes, we had a great holiday. But I wanted to see what it was like. I, I tried opening every single door to that establishment. Everything was locked. No mm -hmm. way to get into the building. 
I had a phone number, I called the guy, and about an hour and a half later I get a phone call back. He says, well, we only meet on first and third Thursdays. I said, this is a first Thursday. And he goes, oh, wow, well, man. Again, in Colorado, they've, they've got free dope now. Um, <laughs> so, but they lost. Now, obviously, I'm not going to join. I'm there to visit. But if I came with the idea of maybe looking to join, it's closed. Now, why do I bring them up? Is that a little insulting? Well, actually, I started a club in London at Citigroup where I used to be a managing director. And we had our 13th birthday. I thought, okay, great. We're a teenager, right? It's, uh, you know, confirmation, bar mitzvah, you know, it's coming of age. I gave a phone call and I talked to the president from two years ago because that's what number was on the site. Yeah. Okay? And I thought, you know, I got on him about it and then I went on to our own website and ours was the same. It wasn't my name and it wasn't my phone number. Right? So how does somebody get in touch with us? It's really difficult. And you've got to make sure that you've got those things down. So do people know what time you meet? Do they know the location? Is your location reasonable? Right? If you have a great location and no one's coming, maybe the day is wrong. Right? Look around and think about, hey, let's try something on a Tuesday, a Wednesday, or a Thursday. See if that works better. We meet Saturday mornings, 10 o'clock. Most of my crowd is 20-something. A lot of them, I have now, I guess I've got 42 members now. Okay? We were 21 July 1st. All right? But if you have a Thursday night or if you're going to a wedding, there's so many reasons not to come on a Saturday morning. But I get 20, 21 people every single meeting. And to me, that's the core group. Because then all of a sudden you walk in and you're at an event. You're at a, you're at a show. It's not just six people sitting around, hey, uh, Kim, do you, do you mind doing an evaluation today? And grammarian? Okay, you know, it's not like that. Everything is already prepared. So having all that stuff down, knowing what the dates are, the contacts, the seats, etc., is really important. But what else are you doing to gather a crowd? How many of you suffer to get people in? How many guests do you have come, have come to any particular meeting? Actually, I did because I went out and I gave personal invitation, word of the mouth. And I showed them, and, and, and it sounds like I'm tooting my own horn. But That's they came to me. <laughs> they came to me because they heard me speak, and I, they said, "Where did you learn this from?" I said, "Toastmasters. Come mm -hmm. and see us." So that's what I did. All right. Any other people that are having trouble getting? Oh, I'm having trouble. We'll get about five to ten guests a meeting. And how many of those sign up? Um, they have to audition first. It's when you city. Oh. Oh. Okay. Fine. 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 Mm -hmm. So you don't have a problem getting people in. If anything, it's a matter of, of being good enough to, in order to get in. But, but most people don't have that problem. It's not a matter of being good enough. It's a matter of finding it. And so that's the kind of thing you have to look at. I asked my club today, uh, hey, how many of you, how did you, how did you find us? How many of you in this room went on to find a club in your area, and then all of a sudden you found the club you're in? OK, only about, about I'd say, 30% of the room. Okay, I had all but three. Okay, so having that information up to date, current, is really important. And we get a lot of people that just walk in on that day, and that's the reason why. So you've got to make sure you have all that information available. And if you don't, it's really impossible to get people in. So, this is how many guests we've had this year. All right, we had three guests on July 1st, two, three, four, five, six. Two, four, three, and we had, like I said, four today. Okay, so we had a total of 32 opportunities to sign people up. And I think if you let people come through there and you're not trying to set them up or sign them up, you are doing them a disservice. People do not walk into that room. It's not like you're walking through Marshall Fields. Can I still call it that? You're not just walking into Marshall Fields because you're having lunch in an hour and you just got to kill some time. No one walks in for that reason. We are like a, we're a car dealer. Very few people walk into a car dealer just to walk in because they're not interested in buying a car. People walk into our office for a reason. They're looking for something. And you've got to be the thing that they're looking for. And you have to get, make that available to them. So if you're not trying to get that sale, then you're doing yourself as a, a, a person, as a club, and you're certainly doing that individual a disservice. All right? So you have to make sure you're out there selling. And some people say, well, I'm not a salesperson. Fine. Find the person in your club that is. But you know what? We're all salespeople. 
People wore particular outfits today because they looked better in them than the other outfit they were thinking about. That's trying to sell yourself. We are constantly out trying to sell ourselves. And trying to help people out really makes a big difference. So, this is the number that joined. We had zero join the first day. We had two, 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 four, zero, two, three, three, and then we got another three today. All right? So, that comes out to 56%. Now, I put two of them in red, and I'm going to tell you why I did that. Guess who wasn't at those meetings? You. You. I wasn't. And so the rest of my club wasn't thinking about it. They're not selling. All right? They're not heavily selling out there. And by that, I don't mean like I'm up in, and I'm all up inside of you trying to sell. But I make sure when I close out every meeting because I'm the president, I talk about community. I talk about how important it is that we're all here for each other. Okay? We did not come here just for ourselves. We came here for each other. And if you don't believe that, you don't belong in this room. Because we're here evaluating each other. Right? I'm asking you to be honest with me. I'm asking you to look at me at every vulnerability I have. I want you to look at my mistakes, tell me what my mistakes are, and tell me how to improve those. So if you're not sitting with friends, you're not coming back. So I make sure they know what that is. And I think you have to sell whatever it is that your club has. So when I used to be in London Corinthians Toastmasters, we had a group that ran a conference like this. Only our conferences were the UK and Ireland, so it was a big deal. It was a lot of logistics involved. And at the end of that year, half our club was literally burnt out. There was so much work done. And I became the president to a club that instead of normally having this many people, and this would be a normal meeting for us, I just had this. And so I had to work my butt off in order to get those people back and to get new people in. And by the end of the year, we were back where we were. Okay? But you have to put in that time and that energy. So for me, I look at this and simply say, I put in the time, and at the end of those meetings, I make sure they understand what this is all about. So today, we let, we, I had two people last night cut out on speeches. I had another person come in and tell me they take it at 1 a.m., all right? I don't print up my programs until the last minute because I don't want somebody coming in and then me having to go through the program saying, uh, instead of this person, it's going to be this person. Instead of this person, it's going to be this person because it doesn't look professional, all right? I ran professional sales teams for well over 20 years. Okay? I don't want them knowing, I don't want the guests knowing that someone wasn't able to make it and that someone else is filling in. All right? Let them guess that on their own. So I, try, I sell what I have. And now what I'm selling is I'm selling new. Because I've got a room of people that are brand new. So when I've got the, four, the three of you come in the room and you've never been here before and you don't know, well, geez, I don't know how long it's going to take. How many of you have been in this for less than six months? And most of my room puts their hand up. Okay? And then at the end of the meeting, I had today, I had a brand new Toastmaster, and i got to tell you, probably one of the best I've seen in 20 years. Right? But I really helped them prepare. Right? It's a show. Okay? And I'm, I'm going to make sure that everybody has the best opportunity they have to put their best foot forward. I don't want them to fall. Because if I have somebody fall, then the next person thinks, oh, maybe I'm not going to do this. So you've got to really be looking out for each other. And how does that work best? Structure. Okay? I think a meeting needs to have a lot of structure. And, and there's a lot of work that goes in beforehand. I think that's what I put on the program. It's not easy just doing it. You've got a lot of work to do beforehand. All right? So I love this uh, Gary Larson comment. Uh, <laughs> Barney's total chaos. Oh, here's the border colleague. Guess what? Be your border colleagues. Okay? Make sure you run, your meeting works right. Meet and greet at the door. First thing that we do, we've got, a to we've got our sergeant at arms. He's sitting at the doorway. We've got name badges right there, ready to go, and I introduce myself to everyone that comes in, and then normally what we do is we immediately go, Catherine, first meeting, here, I want you to sit with Marie. All right? I take her through the program, and we start getting going that way. So immediately you're assigned to somebody, and it's their place to help you out through that meeting. I've gone to meetings in, in every country I've like, probably gone to. I went to a meeting in Australia where I came in, no one said hello, I sat down, Finally, somebody talked to me. He then introduced me at the meeting, and I never got a chance to speak. Wow. I was like blown away by that. I never had that situation before in all my years of Toastmasters. So someone else introduced me, and then I never got a chance to even say hello or what I thought of the meeting. Now, obviously I'm not joining because at the time I'm living in London, I'm in Australia. But 
Am I joining that meeting if I was a local? No. I, I don't think so. Okay? There was no opportunity for me there. So for me, these are some of the quick things, right? I assign a member, and then we've got name tags. And I'll tell you something else. If I get a phone call, uh, or I get an, uh, if Greg sends me an email, hey, I'm interested in coming to your meeting, great, Greg, this is when the meeting is, this is how it all works, this is the structure, I give about three paragraphs on it, and then uh, are you going to try to make it this weekend? Absolutely. You've got a name tag already made out for you, okay? All right? It's printed out, like, like this, all right? Now, does that make a difference? I'll tell you right now. It makes a huge difference because you come into that room, I've got somebody greeting you out the door. I greet you out the door. Oh, oh, geez, Greg, hey, I got a name tag here ready for you already. By the way, I put that in a different color because I got so many new members. Uh, I want them to know, hey, here's a new person, all right? So take them under the wing. And then we start, you know, we start up with the meeting, okay? I do all I can to make them feel warm and fuzzy and welcome because for a lot of people, and, and this wasn't me, but for a lot of people walking through that door, I know people that say it took me three years. It took me three years to walk through that door. And you're not going to take the time to, to say hello? You're just going to let them sit on their own? Are they coming back? I, I, I don't know that they are. Okay? So take them in. Help them out. Let them feel like they're here and you want them to be here. Because I know I do. Bill, can I ask a question? Yes, you can. No, go ahead. Okay. Is to your meet and greet at the door, is your table inside the room or outside the room before you even come into the party time, so to speak? It's a good question. We have, <clears throat> I, I'd say our room is probably about this size. We're in the back room of a church, mm -hmm. okay? It's, it's anything but glamorous. And I have a little table that I have right here. So basically where this first row of people is, that's where all the name tags are. So first off, you see all the name tags, everything's ready to go for all of my, all of my members, and then any guests that I know. And if you were a guest three weeks ago, and I think you're coming back, I've got that name tag out, just in case. Because I want them to feel, oh, okay, all right, they want me. Um, and so, yeah, so that's just our, our, the way that we're particularly set up. Okay, so they come in, they sign in. Um, I got a sign up sheet, and, and I'll show you some of that stuff later if you're interested. And then I take attendance. Okay? I have an attendance sheet when you come in. And that, that, that works for me in a couple of ways. Number one, it shows them, wow, they've got 37 members right now. Okay? All right? At the bottom of it, there's five places for guests. So I'm expecting a number of guests. And I fill out most of that portion all the time as well. What it also does for me is, I keep a track of who's at every meeting. And I do that for a couple of reasons. Because if all of a sudden I find out that you've missed four meetings, there's something going on. Okay? Now that can be anything. That, that could be a medical reason, or it may be the fact that, that Dan, uh, you know, I'm just not that interested anymore. Okay, how come? What happened? Why, why, why did we lose interest? You know, what's going on? How do we make things change? And when you show that personal approach, trust me, it makes a huge difference. All right? People say, oh, you put in this extra time. Yeah, I do. I make phone calls. I send emails. I send personal emails. Okay? One of the things that I do when I'm sending out an email to a particular person, um, I will put their name in the, in the target line, in the, in the subject line, so that they know this isn't a group email. This is particularly for you, Dan. Okay? This, <coughs> this email is about you only. And that way, I'm able to make sure that I get people through. So, I give a guest introduction as soon as we get in. Yes, Greg. Wait, you do this as president or your membership person does it? The starting the meeting? No. You said you send out emails, all these in personal introduction to response to We members. both do. You do it? Oh. We both do. And then I'm going to go on and get to that on that as well. That's a lot of work. Do not get yourself in a position where only one person is doing something in your class. Yeah. Yeah. Delegate. You, you, but delegate, but also putting in a position yeah. where at least two people do every role. Okay? Because if. Kim is gone for a big, on holiday for the next two weeks, then all of a sudden I get two weeks where I don't have a membership person, or two weeks where I don't have a VPE person. Um, I work from home. I get a lot of free time. I'm semi-retired. So I, I like getting things done quickly. And, and I've had situations with my treasurer where she's like, wow, you're, you're like way too quickly at this. I said, great, thank you for that. Um, is four days enough time? If we get a new membership paper in, is four days enough time? She goes, yes. 
I said, so if it's not four days, can we have someone else sign the, sign the person up? Absolutely. Okay, great. Make up those parameters, but help it. Help out. If you've got one person that has a key role that basically just took that role because they wanted to check a box and put it on a resume, and let's be honest about it, we all know those people. Okay? They are going to put. They are going to drag your company down, and that's the way I look at it. This is a little company. You're running this company for a year. Um, so enthusiastic opening and manual objectives. I put on the back of every one of my programs, and I'll I'll, I'll show these to you guys later. But on the back of every one of my programs is the 10 objectives. So that all those new members get an idea for what all these people are going to be up for. And if you're interested in joining, this is what we're looking for. This is what you're going to do over the, in the course of the year while you're doing it. What I also do is I show my next three meetings. All right? I do that for two reasons. Okay? Number one, before I start the meeting, I just walk around. I say, Greg, I got you down for Toastmaster next week. Are you in? Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm good. Actually, no, I'm on a business meeting. Um, I need to cancel it out. So we do all of that. So the VPA and I can then go out and find other people. But most of the time, I can sign them up right there at that meeting. Right? So the next two weeks is done. I got nothing to think about. Uh, my program is already done for next week. Oh, excuse me, for two weeks from now. We meet every two weeks. All right? So, but it also shows that there's a continuity, that there's a structure. And so people look at that, and they're interested in joining because of that reason. Um, Bill? Yes? Can we go back to guest introductions? Yes. What happens when your guests walk in 10 minutes after the meeting starts? Uh, introduce them at, uh, right towards the break or introduce them at the end of the meeting. If you have time at the end of the meeting, at getting people up to say, hey, what would you think of the meeting today? You know, how, you know no, did it meet your expectations is a great way of doing it. Um, what, what I try to do, and before I, I don't want to forget about it later because now that you brought this up, we go out of our way, the Table Topics Master, to go up to every guest and ask them are they interested in doing a topic. Let me tell you something. If they do a topic and they do pretty well on the topic, you're pretty, you, you, that's, that sale is pretty much done. And even if they do a poor job at it, we have a topics evaluator. I'll talk about that afterwards. A lot of clubs don't do that. We had that always in London and I've reincorporated it here. And so all of a sudden, if you get a warm and fuzzy because I've given you a great evaluation <coughs> on something that you thought maybe didn't go that well, all of a sudden you're like, wow, this is very supportive and maybe I can get help. Yes, sir. All right. In the beginning, I mean, I've been in our club for nine years. We always did the uh, uh, sign-up sheet, passed it around, encouraged people, and we got them committed. We then switched to online on the website. Mm -hmm. You have to go in, and it's not working. And I know that... International, I understand, was, you know, kind of pushing for the, you know, the online stuff. But I think you don't get people committed. It's always the last minute we're chasing and chasing. I'll tell you my problem with it. I've got a, numerous problems with that whole system. And I, Thank you. So I basically, I, I sell a meeting. Yeah. I sell at least four meetings at a, at a time. All right? So... Um, you, let's be honest about it. How many people here have been doing this forever and still know people that haven't finished their 10th speech, but they're still members of your club, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. People go at different yeah. speeds. Exactly. Uh, Runjit, who's in my club, I swear to you, he joined in March. He should have his DTM by Christmas. Yeah. I mean, he's just that kind of guy. He's going to be, he has his number 10, will be finished at our next meeting. Did people go at different speeds? Yes. All right? Now, this is my thing. For someone like Runjit, I say to him, I will give, you know, we'll give you a speech slot three weeks out or four or four meetings out, but before that, you've got to do two other roles. You can't just let people cherry pick. Right. And the other problem with cherry picking is this. You have to run the show. Or someone, let me your VPE or you, but people have to run the show because I do not want a brand new Toastmaster and a brand new Topics Master on the same night. Why? Well, there's, too many, there's two opportunities to crash and burn exactly. on two major segments of, of the show. All right? Put in somebody, you know, give everyone that opportunity to be the lead. But put great supporting actors around them. And you, then you still, let, you still pull it off. Right. right? But if you have a poor toast measure, and that's the thing, if you just yeah. let them sign up online, you have no control over that. Exactly. All of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, someone's doing six speeches in, in the next eight meetings. That's, that's not fair to everybody else. I certainly can't do that now. I, I have 22 new members. My, I like we have icebreakers every week, right? So you got to make sure you're keeping that thing going, and thank that you're. You. Thank you so much. All right. Um.
So, one of the things that I do, how easy is it to join your, join your club? We have applications on the table, ready to go. Every part that can be filled out, we've already filled out. Right? It's like it being an insurance salesperson. Mm -hmm. You ever try to, if you had to sit down and, and fill out those forms on your own, you would never do it. I try to make it as easy as possible. I have clipboards for them. If you're interested in drumming, here's a clipboard. Sign it. Um, I'll check it out before you go. VPE will check it out. Membership. This is the beauty of it now. Getting back to what you're talking about, Greg. So originally it was really just me. Now all of a sudden we've got this community thing that goes at the end. Everyone's talking. And all of a sudden someone says, okay, I'm interested in joining. And one of the other guys takes one of the clipboards, gives it to them. And so now I don't have one membership person. I have about six. And so everyone's out there doing the sale. And that to me is what makes it happen. And if it doesn't happen on the day, so this woman that left us today, I said, I do have your email, right? Yes. We will make sure that we send her emails. She'll get our newsletter, and we'll make sure that we get her on. All right. So you don't put together guest packets? No. No. Thank you. I'm going to come a guest to packet you. Is, a guest packet is me telling you, come back another yeah. day and think about it. It's like giving it, somebody You just saw it. There's nothing back. else for me to show you than what we've just done. Thank you, thank if you. you're not selling it right here every single day, then you've then you've missed it. This is the test drive. Right. This is a business. I mean, you're thinking about how would you run your business? Yes. This is exactly what we're doing. I yes. Mean, we need to do. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Do people feel uncomfortable getting their credit card information? Thank you. That's a good question. I do not include that form. I don't want that form. So we've made it easy for people. We can pay. You can pay through Venmo or PayPal. So one of the guys today literally paid on the spot. So I already have his, I have his uh, thing in the, in the closet right here, and I have, and he's already sent the money. Yes. So then uh, you, you turn around and send it to International? I mean, how do, how do you? Yeah, so, yeah. well, because you have to get money. <clears throat> this is the thing. You're only getting a portion. Depends on what kind of club you have. We, we charge money outside. I'm sure some of the corporate clubs don't. But we charge money as well for uh, paper, for ink, all of those things. So we're asking everybody for $66. We're act, I'm right now I'm asking everybody for $75. $20 for membership fee, yeah. and then $45 for Toastmasters for six months. Oh. That's everybody. That's No one gets away from that. That's $65. And I ask for another $20, $21 every six months. Okay? But that's there's no one that gets away with that. That's $45 is everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Six months. Every six months is $45. If, you're, if you have a company club, maybe they pay for it. But everyone pays 45. So we pay 66. So it's 11 dollars a month to join our club. Okay. I, if, if you if this isn't worth 11 dollars twice a week, excuse me, twice a month, yeah. we're doing something wrong. That's the way I look at it. All right. So this is the thing we're just talking about. That you set the menu. It's not a potluck dinner. When you sign up online and anyone can sign up for any role they want, any night that they want, you're basically saying, hey, let's see what everyone brings and how it turns out. Okay? I think that's crazy. All right? Now, sharing kitchen duties is exactly what I was just talking about with Greg here. Okay? I don't have just one chef for any particular part. Everyone's doing everything so that we know that people have things covered. And sure, someone gets credit for doing a particular role, but I want to make sure that everyone knows what they're doing and that we're all on the same page working the same thing. Okay? Now, serving lobster to vets. Who else has ever heard of having topics evaluations? Okay, a few people do it, okay? All right? I'll tell you what I love about topics evaluations because it's the one thing, even after doing this for 22 years, that I still find challenging. When I'm doing a general evaluation role, I got the whole meeting to write down everything. We do topics evaluation the second topic stuff. All right? So you just had eight topics. Hey, you got six minutes. Get up and give an evaluation of all six. All right? I'll do the one for all of them. You do, you do all six. Yeah. Yeah. So you, one person, boom, 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 boom. You got seven minutes. And they know ahead of time that they're going to have. Oh, yeah. And they're not picked for topics. <laughs> they're not picked for topics. No, no, Just no. one person evaluates Just one person. Them. One person evaluates them all. Ooh. It's a tougher role. But you know what's nice about that? After a while, I, like I said, I've been doing this for 22 years. How many times? I mean, I can evaluate, do a speech evaluation in my sleep. Okay? It gets boring after a while. Most clubs, most people quit after two years. After yeah. two years. All right? There's not enough juice in it anymore. Make roles interesting. Do interesting things. We started doing some other things as well. Sharing the recipes is just what I was talking about. Uh, make sure they're all well fed. Make sure they're all well Give them the roles that they want, 
but make sure they have to eat their vegetables first. <laughs> okay? Right? You want to speak? Fine. I need you to be a Toastmaster. I need you to be an evaluator before that. You got the slot. Deal? Okay, great. We're good. All right? And the other reason about that is, instead of filling up one meeting at a time online, I'm filling up six. I had 75% of our, of our um, time slots out to December filled, I think, by the middle of July. Yeah, and they do. And so they call us up and they change that and all of a sudden I get these slots opening up and all the new people. And so far I haven't had a single complaint. All right? And I'm going to get, and I'm not lying to you, we're getting to the point where all of a sudden it's going to be tough. You know, I had all these new people and how do we fit them all in? Um, but you figure out a way to make it happen. And, and we'll do that. I, we, all, we went from being three speeches a meeting to four speeches a meeting which meant that we had to add on about another 20, 30 minutes. Now, if you're a corporate club and you're meeting it for an hour in the afternoon, you can't do that. We meet on Saturday morning, all right? So instead of 11.30, we finish at 12. And then we try to get a bunch of people to go out to lunch, all right? Because then it's going to cement in the deal better, and we're going to be more community. So that's what I'm looking for. And then I send out invitations to people that haven't been around for a while, all right? So I'm going to make a phone call. How come you haven't been in a meeting? All right? I want to find that with those things out. Because if you, when you show that extra bit that you're caring, and not just a group email or a Facebook page, you know, I'm sorry, I'm a little older than all that. I, I, Facebook is great for getting a message out about something happening, but there's nothing personal about it. It's like, hey, you and my other 400 best friends, I'm invited to this event. When I make a phone call to you, Greg, it's really hard to say I don't want to go. All right? I mean, if you can't make it, you can't make it. But all of a sudden, you start thinking, hey, wow, you know what? They really show personal attention and care. You know what? I'm going to try showing up again. It makes a huge difference. All right. What time do we finish? 3.15? Okay. All right. So, um, make reservations at another restaurant on occasion. This is what I'm doing right now in order to take care of the fact that I have so many people. I have so many clubs in my area. You saw that first slide. All right? There are a lot of clubs that have... Uh, Zero to 19 members. So we're calling up other clubs saying we'll take four slots on your night. Give me two slots of evaluation, two slots of speakers, and we'll, we're happy to do some sort of swap if you want, but we'll take those slots for you. Because a lot of clubs need people coming up to their meetings. So now I've got people going out and doing the show on the road. And the beauty of that is if you only come into this room and speak every single time and you see the same faces, sooner or later, um, it becomes a little easy. But now all of a sudden you're in a different room, you're in a different location, you've got different faces you're looking at, it's an entirely different situation. So getting out on the road makes a big difference. All right? So my thing is, are you helping them achieve their goals? And different people have different goals. Different people join these clubs for different reasons. And maybe that's one of the reasons that we're going to go over this pathway system in February, right? Different people have really very different ways and opportunities and things that they're looking for out of the club. Talk to people. Not everyone is there for the same reason. Not everyone's there for the same reason. So that's it. I, I right. picked this kudu because I he has amazing ears. Huh. And his uh, his thing is either listen or be lunch. Yeah. All right? So questions. Yes. All right. What if you have certain members, they're older, they're retired, they just want to come to the meeting for like a networking purpose and they like giving a speech now and then. But yet, at the same time, you're getting a lot of pressure, saying you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this, and they leave. I think uh, I think let a key person do it at the speed that they want to do it at. But if you need people to do those other roles, you got to get new blood in. Okay. I mean, I haven't done a club speech since I've been in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I, I I'll do educationals. It's like if somebody drops out of a slot last minute. Perfect opportunity for me to give a speech about how to do evaluations or how to do topics, etc. But otherwise, you know, find those new people that are dying to get onto the program. Yes, Chris. Yeah, I have a, I'm a president of a club over in Wisconsin, and I have a small club. I have a past president who's no longer president because she did a lot of things she shouldn't have done, including uh, intimidating some club members. And because of it, they're terrified that it's going to keep happening. And they're terrified to give any presentations because they're afraid they're going to do something wrong. How do I encourage them to give them? I, gotta, I, I, I wouldn't allow that person to be making evaluations. 
Um, I mean, yeah. you know, you, you, you have to steer that. I, I was talking to somebody earlier. When somebody's giving their seven, eight, nine speech, I give someone that's never given an evaluation to give that evaluation. All right? A lot of people, oh, no, no, they don't have enough experience. We turn, turn that around. I have the person that has a CC or something like me, I'll do the icebreaker. Why? Simple reason. Okay? Kim knows everyone in this room. She's been a member for six years. Okay? So, if I totally butcher her evaluation as a new member, okay? All right, first off, she has more experience and she's going to be able to shoulder that. But at the same time, she's going to walk up to someone else in the room after the meeting and say, hey, what did you think of that evaluation? Oh, wow, he was way off. He was right about this. But everything else was wrong. She has that wherewithal, she has that knowledge, she has that reputation, and that circle, okay? But that new person who's up here like this, and now I send up a brand new evaluator who butchers that person, that person's not coming back. You know who else isn't coming back? Those four people that I had come through that door. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my concern. I don't allow a harsh evaluation. We do commend, recommend, commend. I, the worst words I've ever heard in a meeting are, I'm going to be extra critical on this because Joe asked me to. <laughs> well, you know what? Screw Joe. Oh, I'm online. Right. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> be tough with Joe after the meeting. But this evaluation isn't for Joe. It's for everybody, and I'll even go more specific. If it's one for one particular person, it's for that guy who just faint walked through the door. Because I have no idea if he's a semi-pro speaker and he's really just here to get practice, or if it took him six years to come through that door. But I'm going for the second one. Do you, do you uh, send personal invitations? Do you send them an email, a letter, or do you email a phone? In the old days, okay. uh, when you at London Corinthians, I used to send a letter. Now what do you do now? Now I do any emails. Okay. And if, if I have to, I'll, I'll follow up with a phone call. Okay. And also, when you take members, you take members at the end of the I guess at the end of the meeting. Absolutely. How do you induct them then? You induct them after the meeting's over? We I don't I, we don't do the whole induction thing. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even bother with that. Okay. No. All right. I know a lot of people do, but if I was going to yeah. do that, I would have done that at the beginning of today's meeting. All mm -hmm. right. Our new inductees are Bob, Joe, and Sally. Okay. Next. At the next meeting. Yeah, but right. sign them up right now. No. Don't let them go home with a, with a brochure and the idea that maybe they'll sign up. Right now, I'm here. I came here for a reason. I came here to buy a car. I'm selling them a car. Okay. Yes? Because in our club, we tend to ask members not to sign up after the first meeting. Yeah. Because we, we had a, a time when we would do that, and people would sign up and never come back. And, so, and then we felt bad because here we are. We're taking their money. Well, because they'd sign up and they'd pay their money and then they'd never come back because, you know, you come, you're all excited, it's hype, and you're ready to go, and then you go home and you think about the six other things that you've got going or maybe this time won't work or maybe it's not for you. So we always make them wait until the second meeting to... I, I think that's your choice, but I, I think you're missing a huge sales opportunity. Um, you, you talk about your uh, agenda things, but uh, are, are you able to at least print those online? Because I'm kind of, I'm getting a view of about letting people sign. Uh, Please don't take these. I'm going to pass them around. This is what every this is what we produce for every single meeting. And I built a spreadsheet to do most of this, but um, I actually have a form. See, now that back here, my Toastmaster today had never done toast. I had never been Toastmaster before. He has an entire script. Okay, so just pass them around. I make out a timesheet. I make out a sheet for the timekeeper. Most time, the timekeeper is brand new for me. So who, which, which people do I time? You time everybody. But the only people you give reports to are the ones that are in color. Okay? I try to make this as easy as possible. I'm building templates for every single role. So that when you sign up for something for the first time, there is support for you. And you have people to call and people are going to help you out. And if you want someone to sit with you during that role, we'll do that too. But I try to give it as much structure as possible. Because I think structure sells. Yes? Two items. One is in the city. We meet in a hotel, and the hotel provides cookies, so we welcome all guests with cookies. Nice touch. Cookies. Second is after the audition, and if they don't make the cut, so to speak, we, well, we know where they're located, and we recommend that they go to their local Toastmaster club. That's a, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Because I, let me tell you something that I do quite often, and I, I don't do this every time, but I used to do this all the time is I tell people, you came here for a reason. 
You didn't come through this door just to get out of the rain, although today would have been a good excuse for it, <laughs> all right? But I say to them, if you came in here because I was a doctor and you had just broken your arm, and I have just, just everything about me is so horrible that you decide, I am not staying here, I'm leaving, you will not go the rest of your life with a broken arm. You will go somewhere else and have it fixed. Every, I've been to so many, I've been to probably hundreds of Toastmasters clubs, okay? They are all different. They have different aspects to them. Some of them are very casual, some of them are very structured, some of them are very business-like, some of them are very parliamentary procedure, all right? They all look something alike, you can see the DNA in all of them. It's all like a big Ancestry or 23andMe.com commercial, okay? And yes, I've been to a number of them where it's, you're definitely here with the crazy uncle, okay? My thing to them is, go to a club that fits you, that feels right to you. That, and, and that's a lot of different things. It's the personality of the club, it's the day that you're meeting, it's the time that you're meeting. All of those things are important. That's one of the things I say, if, if you're not getting any guests through, you get zero guests and you have nine members, you know, look at changing the night of your show or, or and again, it's a show. Right. Change the night of your show, but control that. Be in charge of it. Yes? All right, mentoring program. We have assi we assign mentors to our new members and they really love it. I think it really helps them. We, we just handle them through their first two or three speeches and whenever they need help, they're right there. Would you, is there, do you, hold, do you do that? Or? We, I, I make it very ad hoc. If you want one, we'll get you one. Mm -hmm. But we don't assign one. All right? Because okay. some, some people want it, some people don't. Yeah. All right? It really depends. Okay. Um, I, I think it's a very personal thing. So you can see from these forms, like we put out, there's a lot of paper we put out. Now, not every single person gets all of those things. Every person gets a program. Yeah. But when they walk in the morning, and I'm, I'm there with my sergeant at arms, at, we were there at 9 o'clock this morning to set up for 10 o'clock. Why? Because I don't want someone showing up at, at 9.30 and we're still hoovering. Okay? All right? I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a business meeting in that respect. It's not a party where you show up 15 minutes later. And that's the other thing that I said to my members. All right? People are showing up at 10 o'clock. We start at 10 o'clock. I'm still waiting. You know, people, hey, Bill, start the meeting. I don't have three of my speakers yet. Listen, okay, guys, you got to get here 10 to 15 minutes early. So we check in so we know everyone's here and check in with each other. Now all of a sudden they do it. you got to tell them. you got to help them out, right? To me, if you run your meeting properly, if you make it highly structured, if you make it easy for them to join, and if you control the show, you're the director, all right? And, and, and that works in a lot of ways. The VPE, the president, etc. But make sure that you've got a show where if you've got a couple of people that are brand new up there and you think, hey, you know what? This is going to be a real stretch for Bob to get up here in front of the audience and be Toastmaster. Fine. Surround him with other people that are good at what they do so you're not going to lose the whole meeting. All right? And then at the end, sell whatever you have. When I was at London Corinthians, I sold the fact that we had all this experience. What am I selling now? I'm selling the fact that we're all new, except for the old guy in front. All right? I'm selling the fact that you're all 20-somethings, you're all professional, you're all trying to make it. This is going to be a community. You're going to work together. You're going to do this together, and it's going to hit, and it's going to happen, and they're loving it. So sell what you've got. This is a great product. Most of you wouldn't be in this room today if you didn't think so. And go out there and do what you can with it. question about promoting within the, uh, promoting the different activities. Do you have ribbons? Do you have things like that for the things that happen? I know somebody mentioned cookies. Uh, yeah, we have ribbons for every for the for the winners of the con of of like best cop topics every day, best evaluator, uh, best um, speak. Um, we have a ribbon for the company communicator. We have a ribbon for icebreaker, and I also have one first timer. I bought like twenty of these. I was like, is if I, I I'd be out of those in the first meeting. Today I had a new top to first time toastmaster, first time general evaluator, first time topics evaluator, first time timekeeper one first-time evaluator. And so I said, now, the first-timer is simply the first time you do Toastmaster. So it's, a, it's an event. And we make people get up, and they, they accept it, and people get applauded for it. But to me, it's all about making community. Make them feel like they belong in this room, that this is the only place that they should go, mm -hmm. and that we're all here together. You make that work, trust me, your membership numbers will grow. So where do you get these ribbons from? 
Right. Toastmasters. Five here. Yeah. Oh, can you get them in the hall? Oh, okay. Okay. Save you, uh, save you the shipping and handling. Okay. I think it's time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Plenty of business cards up here if anyone wants to get in touch with me about how we do things and, and go through it. I'm happy to help out. If anyone wants copies of any particular slides, I'm happy to send those as well. You did right. an excellent job. I hope you'll let me put this online because this is probably one of the oh, best. Yeah. Seminars Please. I've seen. This is the best training I, in nine years oh, yeah. that I've been to. All right, in that case, Honestly, put it on. Get it on now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Monday with It'll everything else. Uh, listen, you know what? I, I, I love this organization. I was practically in tears at the end of my meeting today. Good. I had one person I, I met at the half, at, at the half, and all he said to me was, well, how much is it? And I said, well, $75 if you join today, $75. Oh, okay. And then at the end, I gave a impassioned plea about, I don't want anyone leaving here right now. I want you talking to each other. I want him to know what you thought of her speech today. Good. I want to make sure that you know that someone that just got up here the first time and they didn't do that well, you're here for them and you're supporting them. And they stuck around for another 15, 20, 30 minutes. And all of a sudden I'm looking at my watch saying, like, man, i got to get out. i got to get out the other states. <laughs> but uh, it's growing. It's becoming something. It's not just some place you go for an hour or two hours. It's some place you want to be. And that's what I'm... That's what I want to build, because that's what I grew up in, in Toastmasters, and I'm damned if I'm going to settle for something less. That's nice.